If you ask me, I'd say I'm a country boy. I love the greenery and the open space. It's much better than a crammed city with skyscrapers everywhere and random people shoving you around. Although there is a nice buzz to a busy city, so I thought today, why not look at what the medieval Arab countryside was like? The land in the countryside had many uses for those who resided in these areas. In essence, wherever there was soil and water, many crops could be grown. However, there were certain ones which required special conditions. The first one was the olive tree. As we know, the olive tree was very important as it also produced olive oil, which is hugely popular in the region even in today's world. You could also make fruit from it. This needed rainfall and sandy soil. The second was growing wheat and the third was the palm tree. The palm tree required heat but didn't need much water to produce dates. Goats and camels were also prevalent in the countryside. As you know, camels would be able to travel long distances non-stop whereas goats and sheep couldn't. There were two main groups who would reside and travel through the countryside. The nomadic pastoralists and the settled cultivators. This idea that the countryside only consisted of peasants who would cultivate the land is not quite accurate. In fact, we can see that there was a relationship and mutual interests between the pastoralists who would travel and the cultivators who would stay on the land. They needed each other. The pastoralists needed the crops that the cultivators would produce, such as wheat and dates, as they couldn't stay on certain plots of land and grow it. The cultivators, on the other hand, had the crops, but they didn't have the animals. They needed the camels and the mules for transport, the sheep and goats for meat. Therefore, what we can see is a kind of scratch my back and I'll scratch yours agreement between those two groups. However, in any exchange, one party always had the upper hand and it was the pastoralists. I mean, naturally, they were stronger and hardened people because of the excessive traveling between the countrysides and the deserts. They knew how to breed different animals and they actually viewed themselves as more honorable, more worthy than the peasants who would work on the lands. This created an uneven relationship. The sense of freedom was also prevalent as they were the people who used to travel whereas the villagers were pretty much stuck in one place. But sometimes things between those two groups would become very tense, depending on the political climate or the natural climate even. If water became scarce, crops would grow at a slower rate. There would sometimes be shortages in wheat or dates. And this wasn't good news for the traveling pastoralists. They needed their food to survive and to continue traveling. And if it wasn't available in its abundance, that would prove to be a problem. Because the pastoralists were naturally stronger than the villagers, they would reproduce more. This meant the villagers had more mouths to feed and couldn't keep up with the demands. Sometimes the political climate would even affect this relationship. Arab empires would sometimes require more agriculture and crops for the main cities, which in a way undermined the pastoralists. I just feel that the villagers who cultivated land were stuck in the middle between two stronger opponents and were in a way bullied. To add to the tensions, the landscape of the countryside changed due to turbulent political changes in the Arab world and the mass migration of nomadic pastoralists from Turkey. We actually spoke about the agricultural revolution in the medieval Arab world in one of our previous videos. The demise came when invasions occurred and the bulk of the productions were invested into the main cities. This meant that the countryside and farming was now neglected, which eventually led to its downfall. These areas now dominated by local authorities as the central government lost its power. Local authorities wanted profit more than anything and neglected the reinvestment in the countryside and agriculture. The rise of pastoralism was probably an effect of the decline of agriculture. There were many contributing factors to the decline of agriculture. The loss of power for the central government meant that now the rural areas fell into the hands of local authorities. Also the rise of pastoralism was evident. They now had more freedom to travel and settle which caused even more chaos.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our videos, do make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. You can also visit us on our social media pages on Instagram and Twitter. I've included the links in the description below. Thank you very much.